Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Dear Christian friends, brothers and sisters in God's family, has anyone ever given you the cold shoulder where they just totally ignored you, they would not answer your phone calls, pick up, or answer your emails, where you're in the same room with them and they act as if you just simply were not there? How frustrating. Nobody likes getting the cold shoulder, not from a child, not from a, a spouse, not from a fellow worker, not at all. And yet, as discouraging as it is to get the cold shoulder from a, another human being, just think how discouraging it could be if you were to get it from God himself. Now, that wouldn't happen, would it? I mean, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you felt that God simply did not care what was going on, that he was ignoring you? I mean, here you're suffering all this pain, all these troubles are coming to you, and you've cried out to him, it doesn't seem like anything is happening. Is he ignoring you or not? And you've wondered why? Well, in God's word for today, we are introduced to a grieving mother who found herself in a similar situation, and she must have felt that Jesus was giving her, her the cold shoulder, the brush off, the silent treatment. And yet, through it all, we see a remarkably strong faith as she pleads again and again with the Lord. We take as our theme this morning, pray like the Canaanite woman. Pray persistently, pray believing that God will answer your prayers. Now the area that we're, we're talking about, the, what the situation is that Jesus is going up to Tyre and Sidon, that's just off the northwest side of Galilee, and a Canaanite woman approaches him. Now you know who the Canaanites were, aren't you, don't you? That was that land whose people the Lord said, I'm going to give you this land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your descendants will have all this land. And, well, we saw that uh, Joshua was just starting to come into that land with Jericho in, in our first reading. But this land, these Canaanites, were filled with idolatrous worship. And when God told them to go into the land, they were to not associate with these people. God did not want them connected to any of this false religion. He told them, I want you to kill them, all the men, women, and children. Well, the Israelites didn't do that. Uh, and they fell into the idolatrous worship time and time again. But, so this is this Canaanite woman coming back from a heathen and unbelieving background. And what is she doing? In spite of her heathen background, she's crying out to Jesus. And it wasn't a very nice sound to hear. It was a pain, an anguishing, crying out pain to have a mother in desperation because of her daughter, her daughter that was demon-possessed. We hear, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Here we learn two things about her. First of all, she is a believer. Okay, we find that by how she addresses Jesus. Lord, son of David. Well, that was the term that's used for the Old Testament Messiah that would be coming, a promise that God would send this Messiah. And somehow someone must have either given her a copy of the scriptures or she had connections with the Jews that she believed that truth. But then also we learn that this 
woman was enduring a severe hardship in her life. She had a daughter that was suffering from demon possession. And what an awful, awful thing that must have been. Remember from other stories in the Bible what some of the things of demon possession would do. Typically, those who suffer from demon possession had superhuman strength. And even if you tried to control them by wrapping them up in chains, they could break the chains. They also were often uh, had violent behavior toward themselves as well as toward other people. And they often would have these terrible sounds from within them that would come out and they would be screaming out horrible words. And this mother is saying, oh, she is suffering terribly from demon possession. So she may have had all these different things. What a nightmare this must have been for this mother who loved her child. Her daughter is out of control. And what's worse, there's no medical cure for it. And so what she's trying to do in her desperation, she comes to Jesus and says, oh, Jesus, please heal my daughter. Take this away from her. Can you relate to that kind of desperation? You know, you might not have suffered from demon possession. There may have been times in your life where you said, Lord, I simply can't go on. This is just way too much for me. You know, it may have been some kind of emotional problem, some kind of addiction, a craving you just can't seem to control, financial problem. Maybe it's a medical problem. And you don't know what to do about it. And the pain is so great that you don't know where, where you're going to turn to next. And you just simply cannot sleep. Or maybe it's not your hardship or problem or trouble. Maybe it's with somebody that you love dearly. You're connected to. And you're concerned about them. And that's kind of tearing you apart inside. And you too want to cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Whatever that hardship may be. Well, we notice the response of Jesus to this woman as she comes to him. What's the response? We're told Jesus did not answer her a word. Wow. How that must have hit her. Nothing. I come to you here believing that you are the very son of God, believing that in your love and your mercy, you're going to help me. Nothing. Nothing at all. But can you relate? Have you ever wondered, hey, is there anybody up there? You know, I prayed and I prayed to you. And we're so used to having instant messaging and instant coffee. Well, we'd like to also have instant prayer answered now in the way I want it, period. Well, that doesn't always happen, does it? Some people might give up on praying and say, it's just a waste of time. I didn't get what I want. Yet, this woman does not give up. In Mark's account, we're told that she begged Jesus to help her, begging her. And here, we have the disciples, Jesus' own disciples. They no longer can stand the agonizing cry of this woman over and over again. And they come to Jesus, and what do they ask him? She says, send her away. She keeps crying out after us. There's no pity, no care, just... She keeps crying out. We're, we're sick and tired of hearing this. She keeps crying out after us. These are the same disciples that just previously asked Jesus to do what? Send away those 5,000 men and plus the women and children that are so hungry. Instead of saying, Jesus, you can do something about this. That was his own disciples. And so now we have... This woman, and can you imagine the effect that this was having on her? First, Jesus ignores her. But then what? Jesus responds to his disciples with the words, I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. In other words, he's saying, yes, I was sent primarily to work among the Jews. You know, even this, he is the savior of the world. Primarily to work among the Jews. So what message is that giving to the woman? Basically that he came for the Jews. And, and anybody that's outside of that circle of the Jews, well, tough luck. You know, you don't, you're not one of the children of God. I didn't come for people like you. And yet, she does not give up. She comes to him, falls on her knees, and says, Lord, help me. What else can I do? I am desperate for you. 
Have you ever prayed those words when it seemed like your life was becoming unglued, unraveled, everything coming down on you? Maybe it was someone that you loved and cared about or they really connected and now they're gone and you don't know which way to turn. Maybe it's some other hardship that seems to overwhelm you. You just don't know where to go. Lord, nothing more I can do. Help me. Help me. I feel so helpless myself. Now after she does this, Jesus speaks to her for the very first time. Okay, and what does he say to her? You heard it before in the children's sermon. It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Wow. You know what he's basically saying here? He's saying, here, you've got the children of Israel. They are God's children and, and not you. You know, he's calling her a dog. But you know something? Instead of taking Jesus' words as some kind of a, a put down, she finds a glimmer of hope in this. And why is that? Because the word that he used for dog was not those wild scavenger dogs that were eating off the, the garbage piles of the city. No, the word that he used was little dog, the pet dog that belonged to the master, that was inside the home, not outside of the home, and would eat underneath the table the scraps that fell the crumbs that fell. You know, and this is what that Canaanite woman holds on to. She acknowledges that she is a dog, that so she doesn't have a place at the table. She's not one of the children of Israel, and acknowledges, though, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Wow. I know I'm not a child, a, a, one of the children of Israel. I know I'm not following all the rules and regulations that they have. I know I don't deserve anything from you, but I'm asking you to give me some of the blessings you give to your children, the children of Israel. And just the crumbs would be enough to help my daughter. Incredible. Incredible. She doesn't give up. And there she is. She's confessing her unworthiness and yet believing that Jesus truly would answer her prayer. And what does Jesus reply to her? Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed that very hour. You know what's also incredible about this? Who is this? Coming from a heathen background believing in Jesus. There's one other case in scripture that we have something very similar to that. Do you remember that, what story that was? The account of the centurion, Roman centurion, asking Jesus to help his servant. And no, Jesus, you don't have to come under my roof. All you have to do is say the word only, and my servant will be healed. Wow. Those two. Sometimes church people take some of these things and get it watered down, become very apathetic to it. You go to some of the mission fields outside of our country and these people are on fire for God. And it's just lit up and you can see this in, in this woman. I believe with all my heart, you can do this. You can do this. They know I don't deserve it. No, but I know you can do it. You not only have a desire and the ability to do this, Jesus, but also I know you could and will heal my daughter. Wow, incredible. Not because of who she was, but because who Jesus is, the very Son of God, and that she firmly believed that God would have mercy upon her and her daughter. What a lesson for us today. You know, the same thing is true for you and me today. There are times in our lives where we think that God is ignoring us for our troubles seem to want to overwhelm us and just grab a hold of us. It's more than what we can bear. It's at those times we need to go back to what we know to be true. And what does God tell you about your past? He says, already before creation, I know, I knew who you were. I know your name. I have loved you with an everlasting love. You're not here 
because how wonderful you are. It's because God has put faith into your heart to believe that. The truth that Jesus Christ came to fulfill God's plan for you. You see, God saw all of your sins. From the day that you've been conceived to the day that you will die, he takes the breath of life from you. In spite of all those sins, hundreds and thousands and millions over your lifetime, he said, I'm going to send my son to take your place in hell. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sin. Wow, you don't have to pay for your own sins. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Wow. And then he's going to live that perfect life for you and give you his perfection. And you will be our children, my child, because of what the Holy Spirit has done in your heart. But now you have that hope of eternal life. Now you know that if you die right now, you've got heaven waiting. A place where there's no more troubles, no more problems, no more temptations to try and pull you away from God. Not just the joy of being in the glory of God and his heavenly home. But until that time, what else do you know? Oh, you're living down here and this is a veil of tears and it can be very troublesome and very heart, heart rending at times. And what do you do? I mean, which of you have no problems whatsoever? They come, don't they? And sometimes they come pretty hard. And this is where he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, do you remember that? Do you believe it at those times? Never to leave. Hmm. I am your refuge and strength. Am, not will be. I am, even now. An ever-present help in trouble. You've heard these words from me time and time again because they are great ones to hang on to. Yeah, an ever-present help. And, and, and when that mountain's depart and, and your world's falling apart, then what? Well, he just tells you, be still. Why? And know that I am God. The Lord Almighty is with us. You can't have anything more powerful, the creator of heaven and earth. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. He can do anything. With him, nothing is impossible. Do you believe that for your life, the here and the now? And that, yes, he knows your every thought. You can't get anything by him. What a comfort when you're struggling. That even if you can't word it, put it into words, he says, I'm sending the Holy Spirit down to bring it up to my throne. I know. And what a comfort. But believe it. Believe those words that God wants to give to you. And then rejoice that he gives you the faith to believe that. And then you can, no matter how desperate your times come, you can pray and be persistent like that, a Canaanite woman, knowing that God has your best interests in mind, even though it, you may not see it that way at times. All things work out for good. But believe it. And when you do, how blessed you are because you have that Lord right there with you. Amen.